Hi, this is Matthew with RetroEdge.Tech, and I have made significantly significant progress with the binary space partition window manager, or BSPWM. And BSPWM is essentially um, a window manager that puts things in tiles. And so instead of having windows that overlap each other, like you would have in say Microsoft Windows or Mac OS or the GNOME or Cinnamon desktop environments, uh, those window managers stack windows on top of each other. You can have windows that overlap. Uh, these allow you to put windows in tiles. Um, so something like this where there's uh, one tile on one side and another tile on the other side, and I can and oh you know open up more and more tiles like so and close them and move them around. So in my previous video, uh, which I've embedded here in my post about uh, the progress that I've been making, um, I showed how I was able to get it up on a the BSPWM window manager. I was able to install that and I created a script that actually automatically installed and configured BSPWM onto Linux Mint and Ubuntu-based Linux systems, which was really cool because uh, when I first started being interested in BSPWM, I couldn't figure out how to get it working. I was able to install the packages that were needed. Uh, it's a pseudo, uh, the BSPWM is in the package managers like uh, apt for Linux Mint and a Pacman uh, for um, Manjaro or Arch-based systems. Uh, but I go into the session and I couldn't do anything. Um, and so now I've gotten through that. I figured out what I needed to do. And essentially there's four things to that are needed to have a working uh, BSPWM system. And that's to have the BSPWM uh, program installed. And here's how you would do that on Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Debian. And you also need this SXHKD program, which you use to be able to set your keyboard shortcuts or what's known as key bindings. That's really important because you, need, you don't have a menu or anything to be able to open programs. You need to be able to have keyboard shortcuts to be able to open things and move, move them around. Um, for example, I can swap uh, the windows like that with the keyboard combination. So I'm pressing a particular key combination that, that I've set in, in a file to be able to do that. Um, so Windows Shift and an arrow key pops it over like that, and then Windows Shift and the other arrow key moves it. So I'm swapping the two tiles. Um, but I, when I first started working with that, I had no idea what was going on. But and that's being uh, that we need the SXHKD program to do that, and then we also need the configuration file where those key shortcuts are set up and that needs to be in the place where it's expected to be. And so when you install BSPWM and you install SXHKD, they don't create these subfolders in your home folders config directory. I had to create those on my own and then put uh, the files in them that actually would, would do what they were supposed to. Um, and so just want to show you briefly that I have now got it working on my uh, Manjaro desktop system. And I, I, it took me a little while, I, but I did get it uh, so that it even is working on uh, two monitors. Uh, so here's the two monitor view, and you can kind of see a little bit of the inception thing going on over there with, with the second monitor because I've got OBS. Uh, to record this video running on that monitor. Um, but I was able to get it with, with multiple monitors. And so I can switch um, things like that and like that um, and like that so that you can see that I've got a lot of desktops open and I can configure them and move them around and that sort of thing. Um, I wasn't able to figure out exactly how to get the dual monitors working right away. Um, I'm looking at uh, some of the dot files, the configuration file. This is from uh, DistroTube, uh, so DT. Um, and he has his monitor set up so that he's got all the workspaces on both 
is um, on all three monitors, you know, one through nine. And that just didn't work for me. I, I was, you know, it would show up on one monitor. I could move the mouse to the other monitor, but I could never get tiles to show up on the other monitor. So what I ended up doing is in my configuration uh, for my desktop with the multiple monitors, I ended up putting the odd numbered desktops uh, or workspaces on my left monitor and the even numbered desktop spaces on my right monitor. Um, so uh, let's say, you know, I go to um, workspace two is the one that I'm on. Workspace four is the one that I started on. Um, workspace six um, has some uh, what I was having up to uh, publish the blog post. Um, and then workspace eight, um, I haven't put anything on that. Um, so you can see that. Um, and, and then vice versa, when I have both of the monitors on, um, I can, you know, that's one, three, five, seven, etc. cetera. Um, so I, I got it working, I got it figured out, but it took me a while to do, and I don't think my configuration is exactly perfect, but it's really neat, it's pretty cool. Um, so, and then um, I can, you know, change the focus, I can move the things around, um, I can swap them uh, like so. Um, it's working really well. And it's working really well on the desktop that I'm not sure that I'm gonna go back anytime soon. Now I've still got the Cinnamon desktop in installed. I really like the Cinnamon desktop. I really like Linux Mint Cinnamon. And if anybody were to ask me, hey, I'd like to get into Linux, which desktop should I try? And the one that I would recommend would be Linux Mint Cinnamon. I think it's a great way to get started. Um, it's accessible. It is uh, similar to what people are used to, but then definitely introduces them into the Linux power that's underneath as well. Um, so I, I do recommend that. And uh, on my normal desktop workstation, I was running Manjaro Cinnamon uh, desktop environment. Um, until I just set up this um, BSPWM. So um, I'm liking it a lot. Um, and uh, just to show you here, you know, here's NeoFetch to show you that I am on um, my machine with Manjaro, and it's got a real video card here instead of the, uh, the virtualized one. It's got a whole lot of memory here instead of just you know whatever I, I gave to the virtual machine. And then you can see that it's at running on real hardware. I've got a ThinkStation S30 that I'm running this on. Um, overall, I'm really happy with it, but what's next? I'm going to be continuing to work on my BSPWM Assist script. It was so much fun to be able to just boot into a live boot, a temporary machine, um, download the script, run the script, and then all of the stuff with BSPWM was installed. I could log out of that session. I'm still in the virtual machine, the temporary live boot, log into a BSPWM session, and all of the stuff was set up You know, with what I had at that time with the, the settings and the key binding that's, and that sort of thing. That was a whole lot of fun. I plan on continuing to work on that script so that it works on both Ubuntu uh, and Linux Mint uh, Debian stuff. And then also I'd like to get it to have that same script detect if it's on an Arch-based system like Manjaro or Endeavor OS and have the same script be able to set up BSPWM on um, all of those Linux systems. I'm having a lot of fun writing the script I'm learning much more about bash or shell programming with that. And it's challenging, but it's the right amount of challenging. It's not too hard. It's like, yeah, I can get this. I can figure this out. So definitely having a lot of fun with it. And I plan on continuing that. I haven't published that script yet because I'd like to hammer out a few more things um, before people run it on their own systems. Um, to test a few more things. Uh, for example, one of the things that it does is um, I has currently have it set up so that um, it starts the GNOME terminal uh, as the kind of terminal application in the shell, uh, which is what I've got here. Well, that's installed on uh, 
Linux Mint Cinnamon systems or on Ubuntu systems with the GNOME 3 environment, the, the GNOME terminal is there and is the default one. But on other systems, uh, let's say I was experimenting with Lubuntu, which is the LXQt uh, desktop environment that doesn't have a GNOME terminal, it has Q-terminal instead. Um, so my key bindings and shortcuts and stuff wouldn't work when I'd load it into that. So I have a few things to figure out how to detect which system I'm on, which terminal, and I might even just install a terminal and have the default configuration set up so that it just works out of the box uh, no matter what system it is because I you know, install a particular kind of terminal application that will work on all of them and then set that as the default. That's an idea that I'm working on. Anyway, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If uh, you have any questions about BSBWM, feel free to ask, but I'm sure that a lot of my audience may know more than I do at this point, but I plan on continuing to learn and uh, especially to use this to improve my shell scripting abilities because a lot of this is, um, especially with my BSPWM assist script, that's challenging me in that area. And then also with just the configuration, figuring out what I need to launch where and how to you know, write those things into the configuration files and the BSPWM um, RC is actually an executable. Um, so that's one thing as well, is that, that that file has to be executable. And you can write just shell commands straight in there. Um, and so that is also helping me learn more about how to tell the computer exactly what to do with shell scripting or, or bash scripting, um, POSIX shell scripting. So it's been good. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.